Jotters, third place winner from UCLA Lab School, Gabriel Cromwick. Martin the Amazing Boy Detective. It was a nice summer day in August in Los Angeles and my mom and I were walking to the bank. My mom needed to get some cash. When we got to the bank, my mom told me, Martin, why don't you just stay outside and play with your new iPhone X? So I did. My mom said that I was too young to have a phone and that she wouldn't buy one for me. But since I saved up a lot, I bought one even though I was only 10 years old. Anyway, I was waiting outside when I saw someone leave through the back door and they forgot to lock it. Then some masked people came in. The masked people looked like robbers. So I went to tell my mom about them, but when I got to the glass front doors of the bank, I saw them pointing guns at the people waiting in the bank and the employees. I felt really scared for my mom. I decided to wait outside because there were way too many robbers. So I went to the back to look for their getaway car. There was only one car in the lot and luckily it was unlocked. So I jumped into the trunk. I waited for a few minutes and finally I heard some voices outside saying, we just got a million dollars, we're rich. Then the robbers opened the doors of the car and drove and I was hidden away in the back trunk. I don't know how long they drove for because I fell asleep for a while. Finally, the car stopped and the robbers got out. Suddenly a bright light came in. Pulling out my iPhone X, I tried sharing my location with my dad's best friend, Joe, who's a cop. I waited for a while, but the police didn't come. I looked at my phone and it said, error, no internet connection. I checked my internet connection and sure enough, there was no internet. I just did not know what to do. So, so I snuck out of the trunk and I started looking for an exit got to check to see if the robbers were there. And I got caught by the robbers. They were very surprised to find a 10 year old boy hopping out of their trunk. Two of them grabbed me and pushed me into a dark room that had no windows and they had a door that was a few inches thick, but there was no air vent. But actually there was an air vent after I was looking around. The room seemed impossible to escape from, except for that air vent. So that's what I did. I climbed through that air vent, which was just big enough for a kid my size. When I finally got to the other side, I looked through the grill of the air vent into another room and I saw the robbers and all of the money they stole. So I pulled out my iPhone X again and I took a video of them with their money. Not their money, the money that they stole. They were saying, it was so easy to rob that bank. The cops will have no clue who did this and how to find out and find out where we are in our hideout. But what are we going to do with that kid? What was he doing in that trunk? Now, after the robbers finished talking about how easy it was to rob the bank, they moved to another room and turned off the lights. As they were leaving, I could hear them arguing about what to do with me. I opened the air vent and I jumped out. Then I started to look for an exit. I had no clue where I was, what I was in, or where the exit was. Using the flashlight on my iPhone X, I started to look around and I noticed something odd. There were no windows. Then I realized I must be underground. So that means that there must be stairs. It also explained why my internet was not working. So I started to look for the stairs and after five minutes of looking, I finally found them. I went up the stairs quietly and I pushed open a trap door and I saw the bright sunlight. I was so happy to be out of that cave. I checked my phone and sure enough, there was now a connection. I quickly sent the video to Joe and dropped a pin of my location from Google Maps. It looked like we were somewhere in the mountains behind Malibu. To be sure, I also dialed 911, but before someone could answer, one of the robbers snatched the iPhone out of my hand and I had been caught again. The robber was furious at me, furious. Who did you speak to, he demanded. I was just calling McDonald's to order a cheeseburger, I said, because I'm really, really hungry. You guys didn't feed me anything. Deep down, I was really scared for my life, but I really tried to act cool. The robber looked at me like I was really stupid. You're lying, kid. You don't fool me. I'm taking you back down to the cave and you will never be getting out of here. I tried to delay him, so I said, 
Okay, okay. Well, if McDonald's is no good, then what about an In N Out burger? And no ketchup, please. The robber looked furious. He did not like my attitude. He threw my brand new iPhone to the ground and stomped on it with his foot. Oh my God, I, I hope Joe got my text. The robber pushed me back downstairs and tied me up. You can starve down there, you troublemaking kid. Hours passed by. I started to doubt that anyone would ever find me. Mom and dad must really be worried about me. And then I heard sirens in the distance. I could also hear the robbers shouting and panicking. The cops came bursting through the doors and told the robbers to put their hands up in the air. They were all arrested. Then the cops found me and untied me. Later that day, I was at the police station with my mom and dad. The police chief, Chief Carter, he called me a hero. He was friends with Joe and they had acted right away. Thanks to my video, the robbers would end up in jail for a very long time. And the best part of all was that the police bought me a new iPhone X.